the DSL Hearthstone Legendary Series. We're just about to jump into our grand finals of the first group of the Redemption Tournament. That's right. Uh, one person is going to the offline finals between Trump and Savitz. It's going to be a best of five one more time. Same exact class lines that we saw. And the winner goes to the offline finals happening June 5th to 7th here in the Burbank Studios of ESL America in California. That's going to be happening in just a few weeks. And only one of these players can go through. Unfortunately, second place stays home. They get nothing. Yeah, it's, it's winner takes all. And they'll join the likes of Life Coach, Kalento, Kabi, and Raynad, who are the four players who have already qualified. So yep. I mean, this is a pretty star sign lineup. These guys... Um, have had a long road, too. I mean, they competed in their respective weeks of Legendary Series. Savitz took second in his week. Trump took right. uh, third slash fourth in third slash fourth in his week. So, Just third. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't play a third place match, though. Yeah, but it's like effectively tied for third. Yeah, yeah. Tied for third. Yeah. That's a good way to put it. Mm -hmm. um, and they both had pretty good weeks, but they played a lot of matches to get to where they are. And now they're just uh, three wins away from being able to go to the finals. I'm happy either way. Savitz came last time to the ESL Legendary Series Finals where he infamously dismissed a congratulatory shaking hands yeah. uh, with Silent Storm. But then uh, what happened was he got really upset through losing the series, ended up just denying the handshake, and then walking off stage. He ended up apologizing for it later. Yeah. What's uh, interesting, he could come back, he could win it. He might be able to face off Silent Storm, who will be playing later in the Redemption Tournament, I believe in Group C, and maybe have an opportunity to get revenge there. In the process, also securing a ticket to California from Finland. That's always a nice time of the year. Yeah, indeed. And, of course, uh, the pleasure of bringing Savits, or whoever, to the Legendary Series Land Finals from wherever they are would not be possible without our sponsors. Of course, Plantronics and Gigabyte have joined us for Season 2 of the Legendary Series. And, uh, I mean, you talked about it earlier uh, the late finals is going to be kicking. I talk about a lot of things, TJ, and some of them might be right, some of them might be wrong, but the one thing I know for sure is that the LAN will be bumping. It's going to be really fun. You guys should definitely get your tickets out. We have some fun, fun stuff planned for people who come to the event. You don't have to just come, sit, and watch people play Hearthstone. You get to meet a lot of the players. You get to do some kind of cool activities that we have. Uh, I think I'll be hosting the event. I'm not necessarily commentating. We have actually a surprise commentary team that might be showing up there so you guys should check it out good stuff all around and uh, hopefully we'll be able to get a lot of the more information to you soon because i think tickets are they on sale already uh i'm not too sure yet we still have i mean only, it's like five dollars yeah like, come on guys if you yeah. can't even show five dollars just to you know hang out with calento It'll life coach rain in, in america that's like that's the best part about it uh there's so many offline events in europe yeah in asia but where are the ones in America? There's actually none. That'll be your chance. The first one was the Press Start Land, which was just a few uh, miles from us here. Yeah, yeah. Not that many people ended up uh, like uh, of notability. We don't have like you know Strife Pro and you know Trump there, for example. But they might really be able to come here. Yeah. For these kinds of events, I want to see what happens. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward. To, looking forward to meeting anybody that does mm -hmm. uh, come down and uh, let us know what you guys think. If if you guys are coming down, hit us up on Twitter. Right. Uh, follow us e at ESL Hearthstone. Use the hashtag HLS, of course, for the Hearthstone Legendary Series. Yep. Uh, let us know if you have plans to come. Let us know what you think about uh, the Legendary Series so far. Who you're rooting for to make it in in the Redemption Cup. And, of course, uh, after the series, we'll be jumping in on Twitter, joining in on some of the conversations that you guys are creating. So sure. hit us up there. Yep. Tweet at AzumoQT. Tell him how good he's cut up today. He, he's, he trimmed his hair, trimmed his beard, mm -hmm. all for just me. And I feel very special. Mm -hmm. It's only for you. Everybody else? They get a trim like two days before, but that's it. And you trimmed how long? This morning. I oh, trimmed in the really? bathroom right before the cast, actually. I was with you since this morning. You've been up since 6 a.m., right? I have, yeah. And you drove all the way here? Drive up to the studios. Wow, good for you. Yeah, gives me time to psych myself out all to right. cast with you, man. <laughs> that's right. You just like put on the, what's the, what's the Rocky music called? There has to, there's an actual name for it, right? Rocky music? Yeah, the Rocky theme music. Eye of the Tiger. Oh, that's I, oh I have the Tiger. Course, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You looked at me like I was speaking Russian or something. No, no, I, di I didn't know. I thought you meant like Rocky as in. The, the adjective? Yeah. Not the name? Gotcha. L like being of like rock and roll. to Rocky <laughs> roll. Yeah, yeah. Instead of, oh, no, oh, not I the love movie this Rocky. Rocky and Roll. <laughs> yeah. exactly. Oh, Trump without glasses. Wow. That was really interesting. It's looking. <laughs> And people don't recognize me without glasses sometimes. 
Savitz, when I first met him, he wore glasses the entire weekend. And then when I met him again without glasses, it looked really weird to me. Yeah. Um, during the ES ESGN uh, broadcast, he wore glasses uh, in every match that he played. So I didn't, I didn't put two and two together when he finally came back. Sure. Because people back then called him Savages. <laughs> I and so, all of a sudden, sometimes I was like, we still joke about that. I was like, whoa, savages. All of a sudden, <laughs> this guy comes on the scene who looks sort of like the guy that I used to know him savages, except he doesn't have glasses and people are calling him Savits. I always thought it would be like a cool dichotomy, like having Stefan and Steve Urkel. You know, one guy with the glasses, one guy with yeah, the yeah, glasses. Yeah. I thought about doing that, actually. If I ever competed, it'd be like, you know, Frodan's the commentator with glasses, but when he comes out, he's just like, his hair's combed over. He's wearing like a white tuxedo. What'd your name be then? I have no idea, man. There's no way to make my name cool. Let's just put that. Because it's it already cool. Thanks. <laughs> no Thanks. We've maxed out on the cool factor. No problem. Oh, you okay. could just reverse <laughs> the first three letters of your name. You'd be Orf Dan. Yeah, there's no way to make my name cooler. <laughs> we have Hunter... Uh, for uh, Trump to start things off up against Warlock for Savits. All right. Well, this is the sort of mid-range um, face hybrid. I don't really know what to really call it. It's just Hunter. Uh, that's just what it is. <laughs> runs Savannah High Mains, but also runs cards like Glaive Zuka, Leper Gnome, Abusive Sergeant. So it's got an, a good early game, but it also has a little bit more reach or a little bit more mid-game body stuff. Than a, than a face hunter actually would. So, it, I mean, it's worked out well so far, but one of the matches was a mirror match. So it's hard to really say how this sort of hybrid hunter is, is would actually do when it's um, tested more extensively. Uh, I'm curious to see what it's going to do against the Zoo Warlock from Savits. You know what I really feel like when I see this hunter? I feel like I'm looking at those shampoos that say they're shampoo and hair, or hair conditioner at the same time. <laughs> And I always wonder, the two are you ones? either? Yeah. Because they're really not. They're really not shampoo or conditioner. They don't really get the job done. They just kind of create suds in your hair. Yeah. And then you could throw in a rag and call it soap also. <laughs> oh, man, TJ. That was really clever, man. <laughs> if I was Artosis, <laughs> sure. if I was Artosis I'd, be, I'd be cackling my head off. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Um... All right, so here we go. Zoo versus Hunter to start things off. Now, Trump does have uh, the turn one, but the most important thing that you have to dodge is just not to fall too far behind on board. Generally speaking, though, I feel like the the Hunter still does have the advantage, um, generally speaking. Yeah. The secrets do d end up becoming a big part, though. Like Part of the reason why is because Explosive Trap, there was really no way to stop it. Now that he's transitioned into this mid-range-ish type of thing with high mains and freezing traps. Maybe that changes. It's possible. Um, Maybe it does. I don't know. One of the reasons why this match is so tough, though, is because you're, you're, the whole point of your deck is working against itself when it comes down to a race. Because yeah. you're tapping naturally to gain more cards. What are you smiling at? <laughs> But uh, I'm, it's I'm distracting. Listening. I'm, I'm listening to what you're saying, DJ. I'm happy. <laughs> my analysis is just... I might as well clap my hands because I know it. <laughs> What's wrong with being uh, being positive about life, DJ? There ain't nothing wrong about it. Not at all. Stop giving me a hard time. Well, anyways. Kind of unfortunate that he drew this Void Walker just slightly out of order so that way you can contest the, uh, the, the Leopard Gnome. But he can keep that Void Walker now. Oh, he's going to put it out. Okay, fair enough. Wants it to attract some damage. Thank yeah. you to uh, the M Gang boss. Uh, Defender Vargas, one of the most important cards uh, in this matchup for the Zulok player. Yes. Um, not only does it activate cards oh, shut that down. wouldn't otherwise be activated, but it also. Um, just creates a wall, prevents damage, um, buys you time to to draw into bigger threats. So, right. This is a big, big this power play. This is nasty, well. though. Yeah, kind of. I mean, he's got the abusive sergeant, though. Oh, he's got a freezing trap. Yikes. Yeah. Although he only has a, uh, he already has a mad scientist out. So if he only has one kind of trap. 
the freezing trap, then he's going to weed out the existing one, and then the other one is not as powerful. So then he's just going to go ahead and keep that in his hand, and then here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If he unleashes as well, unleash can clear the board almost uh, effectively with the abusive sergeant. That's also a possibility. But unleash and hounds also continues to improve as implosion gets uh, alive. Implosion yeah. is one of the ways where you know zoo can fight back. Knife juggler implosion. Or just naturally, a good job of uh, staying the board. Yeah, or just naturally, as the game progresses, unleash the hounds will inherently gain more value because there's most likely going to be more things on the board. Mm -hmm. uh, Leoc does buff it to two damage apiece on the dogs. Yeah. And it looks like Trump instead just going to go for the mana efficient play here. Better go hurry up. Trump is known to sometimes uh, take a little bit too long. Yeah. The green glow dissipated, so it looks mm -hmm. like he got it all in, and he did. Oh! He also has, oh, see, like, here's such a th funny thing, too. Like, the sea giant is so cheap, but, you know, he's got to go for the shadow claim play. There's no. Yeah. He's, like, he's dead, dead on, on the board. On board I mean, that's there. also a, a complete dead-on obvious way that's to tell it's freezing trap. He left his only minion now isolated. Mm -hmm. Well, even with the uh, Shadow Flame, which is about the only way that he could possibly deal with a board like that. Right. Um, especially with Freezing Trap up. Yeah, he's still in trouble. <laughs> he's still Yikes. pretty much. Oh, that's difficult. Yeah. Now. Sabine looks surprised. <laughs> Seeing Savannah Hyman. Mm. I thought I saw Leopard Gnomes. Yeah, exactly. Leopard Gnomes, Abusive Sergeants. I thought I saw a Leopard Gnome. Where's, no. that, where's that from? One of those Looney Tunes. That's I thought I saw so Booty Cat. <laughs> yeah. I felt really uncomfortable saying that for some yeah, reason. Yeah, because you, you're we're making eye contact with me, TJ. That's why it's uncomfortable. <laughs> Stop. I'll, I'll look the other way. You're, you're ruining my my happiness. I'll look the other way. Four on the implosion. Not bad at all. Can't really afford to tap, can he? Also, he knows this is freezing trap. He might want to taunt that imp gang boss next turn. Yeah. That abuser sergeant is going to be really useful. It's going to put him at four health. And he's sitting at 30. So he has to kill him in two turns. <laughs> well, he sea does. Giant, Defender of Argus. He does have the cards to do it. Kind of, but there's an Iron Beak Owl on the other end. Yeah. Well, first you pop one of those, uh, the freezing traps, right? Oh, no, no, you want the Sea Giant to be cheaper. I wonder. Ooh, is there any way to, like, he's actually trying to calculate, is there any way to get Sea Giant out and make this, like, pretty efficient so that way he doesn't lose too much mana, but every other play makes the minion count less on the board. Yeah. He's also calculating his damage, how much he could do over two turns. If it's actually I even possible wonder. for him to win. If it's actually even if possible for him to do 30 damage over two turns. Because just hero power. Do you think off. if he had five health, he'd think he'd have a chance? Because he, you know, this giant is a pretty big wall. We, of course, know there's an Iron Beak Owl, More but this is all just theory. Yeah. I mean, he could do six damage this turn, maximum. So well, actually, seven damage this turn, maximum, if he defenders of Argus, two targets that are already on the board. Because one of these imps is getting right. taken by Freezing Trap. So he could put him at 23 with. Um, 3, 4, 5, 13, 14, 15. Damage on board, plus power of woman in hand, 19. He'd still be 4 off. I mean, he'd be in a Doom Guard lethal to win next turn. But that's wishful thinking. Alright, so let's count. 11 damage, 14 damage, 15, 16. He is on Doom Guard draw to... Well, no, because there's an owl. If nothing was removed from his board, absolutely well, it's nothing. It's not that nothing we removed, just 1 damage less. Yeah. And remember that the high main removes one, two power from the board. Yep. And he's going to play the uh, freezing trap, right? Just to limit the amount of damage possible. Yeah. Unless yeah. there was like Malganus. No, Malganus can't even come out because he's eight mana. No. Whoa. That is so much damage. Eight, 12, 13, 21. He is so Sorry. close to lethal. 
Yeah. I was just, <laughs> just going to hope he can see it. Wait, did we miscount? No, no, no way. No, there's no way that he has it. Trump it's, looks quite had, afraid, though. Right, if he had Doom Guard. And he's going to absorb with the Void Chair, but that's going to be it. Trump <laughs> takes the first one. <laughs> oh. That's a big Void Chair, though. All right. Better than Deathwing. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that was a quick, quick laugh shared between friends and, and respected peers. Trump takes the first game. Hunter. Mm -hmm. Hunter wins again. Is that an undefeated streak of Hunters? Uh, as long as you don't count the game that Hunter lost against Hunter. Yeah. Which, in your logic, would be a 100% win rate. Yeah. Even though that was a loser. Yeah, I guess so. And it was, it was an exact mirror as well, so you don't even really count it as a, a non... Yeah, against the mirror of itself, it's not really a win rate against everything else. Yeah, that's true. 100% today. Yeah, it's not pretty bad. impressive. Now, we've seen a couple different flavors. Of course, we saw the legitimate face hunter earlier right. from Chan. Very beginning. Uh, and that we was saw pure face hunter. Yeah, then we see this um <clears throat> this half and half. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, I don't even know what to call it. Well, uh we still have the uh shaman, warlock and warrior for Savits and Trump of course has his control warrior and his handlock. So even though these guys brought two similar classes, they take two different archetypes and approaches to the class. Yeah. Trump going for the more defensive control Civit's going for the more aggressive type forms. Yeah, that seems to be uh, the type of play that Trump usually goes for. Mm -hmm. um, Civit's hard to predict. Sometimes That's part goes... of what makes him a great player. I mean, the whole point is, I think, as you continue to go along in the spectrum of play at the highest level of Hearthstone, and yes, there is a high level of Hearthstone, because I know everyone's kind of uh, <laughs> taking turns at it right now, but uh, you, know, they, you have to be able to... Be flexible and have a lot of variety to your play styles. Being too predictable often is a downfall. I mean, I can go ahead and talk about Hypes from Temple Storm. Uh, one of the big criticisms against him is that he always brings Rogue and Mage somehow, and that makes him a little bit easier to counter. If you bring, like, a Control Warrior, supposedly you start off 1-0 or 2 -0 against him if you're playing Last Hero Standing. It was all a calculated long con by Hyped. Well, sure. He's, he's he spent, he spent an entire year <laughs> playing competitive Hearthstone, making everybody think that he can only play Mage, Druid, Rogue, yeah, and that now Some, he's sometimes zoo. Yeah, now he's just gonna completely just break the mold. He like brings shaman, priest, shaman. and paladin. Yeah. You're like, what are you doing? Hyped <laughs> sweeps like three tournaments in a row because just nobody knows what to expect or what to predict from him. Well played, George Maganzini. Don't even look at me like that. Ugh. I want to spend a day living inside your world, TJ. It must be fascinating. <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> It's really great. Sometimes frightening. Well, Trump's going to go with the handlock against the Mech Shaman. This is a matchup where also it can go very, very poorly. In fact, didn't we see this? No, it was the OTK, right? Yeah, it was Chang. It was OTK Warlock against Shaman, and Savitz <clears throat> completely demolished it. Hmm. Savitz loves this deck. Uh, yeah. And they're actually... You either love this deck, or you think this deck is like terrible, just absolutely garbage. Um, there's no like in between. Nobody comes at this deck and says, "You know, Mech Shaman's okay." No. Um. Yeah. I guess that's fair. Mech Shaman is pretty specialized. Yeah. I personally really like this deck, I mean, but I like a deck even more than that. I guess that opinion could come down to like Fell Reaver alone has a card, to be honest. Oh my. This is already a very good opportunity for Trump. He has the uh, zombie chatter shut down. The warning's apomatic. Mm -hmm. There's, there's always that, uh, the, the flashback to, uh, Dreamhack, the last Dreamhack, where, um, right, the warning's apomatic got turn three kill. Yeah, it was fire bat versus Densifka, right? Yep. Yeah. Do you hero power here and then just let Power Mace chew I up wonder. the Chow? And then go for the Pilot Shredder or Willing Zapomatic afterwards. It is very slow. If you play Zapomatic, you're just basically saying, I want to kill off the Zombie Chow. Which I think is actually a pretty big deal. But I mean, I mean you're thinking, look what? Look at this curve from Trump. <clears throat> okay, so what are you expecting uh, if you see Zombie Chow turn one? Like, if he doesn't play um, Whirling Zapomatic, he's thinking that. He's going to need two turns to kill the zombie chow. He's thinking that his Warling Zapomatic is going to get dark bombed, 
And then he's going to need Power Mace also to mm -hmm. take out the uh, the Zombie Chow. So it's sort of an investment to protect something that he's going to play later on to try and bait out whatever turn two removal he'd have, like Dark Bomb. Um, it is an interesting idea, but... Oh, Trump taps. It's like, well, he's not being really aggressive right now. He's giving me room to to finally find a way to tap for some cards. Yep. So if he's passes, of course, no need to uh, act on that impulse just yet. As much as you want to buff the Pilot Shredder as soon as possible, the buff doesn't even really matter until it's time for the Pilot Shredder to attack. Now it's some time for some interesting choices here. Because next turn is Fire Elemental. So he wants to set that up as best as he can. Yeah. So Lava Burst is sort of out of the question. Um, no matter what mech yeah. he sets up, Lord. though, in tandem with the Pilot Shredder, it's going to get eaten up by the Twilight Drake. Uh, you can Lava Burst and Power Mace. Whirling's yeah, automatic. Then, uh, oh, yeah, you could Lava Burst Power Mace. But that would lock up your Fire Elemental turn. You still have plays next turn. It's not like you'd... You still have Spider Tank as a possibility. It's also fair. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but. So he opts for the Whirling Zapomatic instead. I think he really doesn't want to lock up his mana for. Um, yeah, that's. Parliamental, though. Definitely the line of thinking during. He's thinking about Hellfire, effect. too. Hellfire uh, would definitely be annoying, but. Undoable. There is Shadow Flame play here with Trump. Shut down uh, whatever comes out. Oh, Noyotron. Okay. Well, <laughs> the synergy. Yeah. That's actually. I mean, it lives up to its name. That's very. Cool. I mean, now it's like if he draws like the Flame Tongue Totem, it just like ends up being a really good trade. The, the Fell Reaver. Yeah, but you got Lava Burst uh, Power Mace this turn. And then you can start pushing damage. You need to do some damage to the face. It's like taking way too long to get this done. This game should have been like on the verge of being over. Yeah. You said you never really played World of Warcraft, right? Me? Yeah. Um, not really, no. Do you know the where, where the Fell Reaver came from? They came from WoW. Yeah, I know, but like... The, there's this the fir very first zone in the Burning Crusade expansion. It's a Hellfire Peninsula. It's like this big barren wasteland. And the Fell Reaver is actually a giant mob that walks around the zone, that patrols around the entire zone. Oh. And he's so huge that if you're anywhere near him, he'll come and attack you and like one shot you. Uh, oh. That's so there's cool. so many people that hate Fell Reaver, not because of his implications in Hearthstone. Because of their history. But with just him. because they, they bought Burning Crusade for the first time, booted it up. Step into the new zone, ready to start leveling up, they get, and then they get killed by Fell Reaver instantly. This giant <laughs> mob that's like impossible to escape from. There I'm gonna go. Shadow Flame this, by the way, because uh, he doesn't want that Zapomatic to do any more damage. He's got bomb after bomb. And he's still of pretty healthy. There is a big daddy Fell Reaver. Oh! Never mind. He's just gonna steal its soul. Was that the second Fell Reaver burn? It was. Oh. Second Fell Reaver was burnt. It's gonna be a tough matchup here for Savis for the rest of this game. He didn't get the start that he wanted to get. Right. Not nearly as explosive. He's running out of cards, which is a big thing. Trump is is not out of threats yet. He's got turn. He's got plays for like all the rest of his turns. Right. But doesn't even have to tap an into. Well, he he could. I mean, having big bombs is not the... Can't have down, downsides. All right, well, Ragnaros just has to hit something of the three fours. <laughs> that is some <laughs> really <laughs> bad aim. I mean, that that's kind of like a public restroom. Wait, how much Ragnaros. damage is that? Jesus. Six plus eight. 14, 17 damage? Yeah, but you can't leave Rag up. Yeah. It's too dangerous. That's true. That's a huge board, though. And it's also a really heavy hand. I actually didn't realize how significant. Yeah, that's, that's one of the things that I was contemplating on. I said, oh, that hand's great. But then I realized, 
Wow. He doesn't have really ways awkward. to do with multiple targets. 15 damage right there. His best chance is just to, like, Dr. Boom. Yeah, he doesn't even have any type of AoE. Wow. He's like one mana short from being able to do anything significant. Sylvanas. Next turn, he's going to try to hopefully play like a taunt with Sylvanas and uh, grab some board. But I think Savitz is going to win this game. He just needs one point of direct damage. Or, I mean, he could just earth shock the right. Sylvanas and just push through. I mean, <laughs> the alternative for Trump is to tap into something. Antique heal bot, Sludge Belcher. No, yep. Sludge Belcher would die because uh, he, he has earth shock. You tap, you're dead, unless you draw one of those. Antique heal bot? Because he's got 15 damage on board. Yeah. So I think just playing Dr. Boom is the best course of action here. But Savita's is on a draw to win. That's not. It. Mm. Well, you go ham, right? Put him at one? You go ham on that core. <laughs> Sick meme. Is there any other I way to do wonder. it? Earth shock the face, maybe? <laughs> Two sick memes in a row. You're on fire. Double meme. <laughs> Triple meme. Over me. <laughs> Literally was Meme tacular. <laughs> meme catastrophe. No words. After that. No, I don't remember either. Hmm. Yeah, I play a lot what of Halo back do. in the day. Yeah, so did I. Uh, well, he, is he worried about dying too? I mean, there is nine damage looking at the other end. It's like Hellfire. <laughs> Hellfire could kill him. Yeah, that's true. But, um... I mean, it's not as simple. Ooh, attacking might make him lose a spider tank, hypothetically. That's a very slim chance. Oh. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. He's got to go quickly. Yeah, and I think he got to... All right, he's going to trade one one in here and have a nice mix. Okay, so he plays the Cog uh, Master, and he opts to hold so he doesn't enable Molten Giants. But... Now the bad news starts settling in. Trump just drew his Sun Fury Protector. And he's also got another Taunt Giver, so he's got two layers of taunts. Yeah. Can, can he tap? Hmm. He can tap, play Mountain Giant, and Sun I, Fury Protector. I mean, I think Sylvanas might be even the better play here. Really? He just used Urshock, and Sylvanas is a higher impact in terms of stealing the board. Or, um... Molten Giant is just like a damage sponge, but Sylvanas is a damage sponge plus stealing a minion. Yeah. Although it it could steal like a totem, so maybe you're right actually. Just sheer straight up stats value. Yeah. Would you rather have a six six taunt that steals a minion or an eight eight taunt with lower health? Again, Shaman? Probably eight eight. But it's tough to say. He did just use an Earth Shock. Yeah. Um, was there any merit to Sirius just going all face and just letting his opponent deal with it? There was, but it's difficult considering that antique fuel pocket ruin everything. Yeah. So it really is a debate between maybe Molten Argus then. Mountain Giant? Sometimes? Mountain Giant. Not okay, so just the taunt. And 8 8 it is. Yeah. The Mountain Giant, or sorry, the Molten Giant you're going to be able to play for cheaper, you know. So you might as well play the uh, Mountain while you still can. Crackle the Giant. For five oh. plus? For five plus? <laughs> for four would be terrible. Oh! Uh-oh. Uh -oh. So he's had some choice words for that mountain that giant. That was a mistake. That was a mistake. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, Trump. Brutal. You sly dog, wow. you. Now, Trump, finish him. <laughs> I Cut what off his head! <laughs> <laughs> Trump's fatality would just be him politely bowing and then pushing somebody over. Pointing at something, too. Yeah. I don't know, man. I feel like Savitz is just out of fuel. How does he do this? It's that probably... crackle hitting for four was so painful. He's going to go for like the high stats and just uh, control the state of the board again. Oh, boy. 
I got a, I got bad news for Savitz. That was like level two. We have yet to hit the final boss. Yep. This was like exactly the state in Dragon Ball Z where yeah. like Piccolo and Vegeta just barely defeated like the second form of Frieza. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, you guys are so screwed. Yep. That's it. <laughs> you guys have no chance. I can just this is like this is like stage three. Yeah. And of course, the final stage is Draxus with taunts and stuff. Yeah. All right, you know, Half that race. kind of helps. Yeah, but at the same time, does it? Well, right now, uh, he's one damage off lethal. That's it. Good game. That's it. And wow. Trump goes up 2-0. And Savitz is on his last life. He's going to have to 3-0 this Control Warrior deck. Now, it's not impossible. Zoo can do it for sure. He can win. Shaman... Could win. It's yep. one of those uh, definitely draws well into anything and defeats it. But then the Patron Warrior. That's rough. That is tough. Yeah. Tough as nails. Uh, it's it's considered one of the strongest decks against Patron Warrior. It's right. one of the couple favorite decks um, against Patron Warrior. Right. And that's part of the thing, too. Like, most people are playing Patron Warrior, so because they're like you know, taking away from the people who play Control Warrior in the classes, uh, it makes it even you know, people have been got, getting used to playing against Patron Warrior. But when you know your opponent is Control Warrior, it's like really difficult, you know. Yeah. Um, and you have to like approach it the same way you'd approach uh, any combo versus um versus Warrior matchup, where you have to be really aggressive, hope they don't have the right combination of removal, and then press for the win. Yeah. This is. Probably looking like Trump is coming to Burbank. Just statistically speaking, beating him in three games with Control Warrior is going to be hard. Sometimes Control Warrior just has every single answer. Yeah. Um, um, Greetorp and I, are, or, well, Greetorp with my moral support last week, uh, did the math on if you're up 2-0 in a series, the likelihood of you... Even if you only have a 40% win rate in all three of the matchups that you have to face off for your last three matches, if you're up 2-0, you still have almost an 80% chance to win um, the entire series, statistically speaking. Sure. That's if you have a 40%. If you have a 60% win rate across all the matchups, it goes up to like 95% chance to win. So statistically speaking, Savitz is so hard screwed. So RNG. Okay. Ronaldo. <laughs> oh no, it's spreading. <laughs> All right, uh, Savitz is going to start off with the shaman. Why not? Yep. Get to work. Cogmaster to start things off, but Trump has a weapon to begin things. He is well aware of this deck's potency. And Savitz doesn't have, well, okay, I was going to say he doesn't really have the early game start to follow up this Cogmaster well, but now with that Spire tank, all's well that ends well, I suppose. And that is a really slow start from Warrior. No Fiery War Axe. All right. So Vitz is back in business. Yeah. Eyebrows raised, hair combed back. <laughs> mm -hmm. Neutral manner and pose. Really bad news. There's Power Mace coming out. That's nine wow. damage the following turn. He's going to be working at 21 health. He has Brawl. But you can tell just by the expression on Trump's face that he is not happy. He's uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, this Cogmaster is effectively done, what, six damage so six far? Damage. He's going to do nine damage. It's pretty good for a one drop. Nine damage for one mana. People always complain about Undertaker, but jeez. Undertaker at this stage would have pumped out, like, 40 damage. You'd be dead two turns ago. Uh, this game almost is over. Uh, the Sludge Belcher shield mating combination might keep it a uh, alive for a while, though. Yeah, but will it? I mean, he's got Earthshock. Um, he's got a little bit of burn with Rockbiter. He draws into a spell like Crackle or Lava Burst. I mean, this game's all but over. Well, if a mech pops out of that, then probably. Yeah, instead, it's somewhat uh, of a Pretty reasonable threat. Yeah. Power Mace, though. Let me tell you about Power Mace. Power Mace is one awesome card. You drop the Mech Warper. You drop the Pilot Shredder. 
You know, actually, I wonder, do you even, you can even force it so that a Neutron absorbs some of the dip blow. Oh, I don't mind this either. Earthshock just to get past it. Go super ham. Uh, that's lethal. Oh, right. Because <laughs> of the, the buff yeah. on the cog. Yeah, you can buff the cog oh, faster plus right. an Neutron. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I was like, oh, he doesn't have a mech. There's no way he can activate yeah, his yeah, Cogmaster. Yeah, 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 yeah. But oh, no, he did. I, I forgot that Cogmaster got plus two at that moment. So yeah, yeah. Really cool, crafty win. Yeah. Um, yeah. Savit, I mean, uh, that's why he throws out the Shaman. Takes a quick nice win. Job. Nice job. Turns around the momentum into partially his favor, but still got a tough road ahead of him. Trump has still two more chances to take a win with Control Warrior. Control Warrior, uh, well, that's one of the tougher matchups, generally speaking. If you, it's like Fire War X or Die. And then yeah. this matchup, if uh, Savitz queues up the uh, the zoo, it's it's kind of like the same exact scenario. It's like, get Fire War X, and if I don't have Fire War X, either uh, you know, hope that he has a slow start or stabilize enough with like the early game, like shield, like a shield slam on a knife juggler or you know, execute on Doom Guard if he ever plays it early. Yeah. And then, realistically, we could be just going to Game 5. I like uh, Trump's chances, though, going into Game 5. That's, like, the big deciding thing. But, the I thing mean, you're taking percentages of matchups as a whole, like, in a whole thing, if you just go straight up 40%. Oh, yeah, yeah, That's yeah. if both players play optimally. Yeah, yeah. You have to look at each game individually, sort of. I was just giving a, a broad scope with the limited amount of time that I had right. to present my information. I understand where you're coming from, though. And I mean, generally speaking, if they were to play in that vacuum of, uh, you know, because you know, even within those percentages, it's like you have a pretty good chance of hitting correctly, and yeah. sometimes misplaying. I didn't even come up with numbers, but just like being next to Greetorp while he was talking about numbers, <laughs> made me feel like smarter. And it's even carrying over to this week. I just feel like above everybody else because you know, like I know percentages and stuff, like way. Yeah, like totally. Like way. <laughs> like way. Trump's going to toss back a couple of those cards. Needs some anti aggro. Needs that fiery war axe. Drawing his hair might not necessarily be awful if he has the Blackwing Corruptor and the fiery war axe, but oh, he doesn't have it. That is awkward. Well, both hands are a little awkward. Yeah, but you get punished quite a bit more, I think, if you're the control warrior and your hand's awkward you than you do if you're the zoo. Because you can make do with an awkward hand, unless your hand is like the most awkward as it can possibly be. Like double Doomguard Malganus is your first three cards. Into double power overwhelming. But this is just rough. I mean he got he has both his top end and his opening hand, his first two cards yeah, are the last two cards that he would ever want. The Savis isn't exact okay, now he's got Malganus, so Right, now it becomes a lot bigger problem. Yeah. But before I was like, his hand's not in terribly impressive. Yeesh! <laughs> oh! Sorry, I felt like I had to one-up your sound. There. Well, you did that. Oh. All right, so Trump's going to just, just hold on, silence this Void Caller armor up. Just keep taking a little bit more damage every single turn. Uh, those are quite a big chunk of damage. I mean, he's sitting there taking nine damage each turn. Well, Cool Taskmaster effectively gains him the same amount of health as Iron Ring Up would be, uh, but it also puts a body on the board. Ooh, Defender Vargas is nasty. He's got a lot of burn in here as well. Mm -hmm. He can even utilize Power of Warming with Boy Terror the turn after to put on more pressure, plus put something on the board that's just super annoying to remove. So and then Trump's going to have to brawl is. next turn. Uh, Can he survive? If he brawls, shield maiden. And, like, say the best case scenario happens every single time, like, you know, this cool, like, the force minion survives. Well, Dan, the answer's no. The answer's no, as in? He cannot survive. He will not survive. No, oh, what if this Iron Beak Owl survives the brawl? Ah, uh, okay, never mind. Ouch. Okay, so what if this Defender of Argus survives the brawl? Well, does he have enough time? Shield Maiden does give 5 life. And yeah. it's 5-5. Five, five. Yeah. Alright, middle of the road. In fact, that might even be slightly better. Yeah, uh, it's a 2-2 two, two with Taunt as opposed to a 2-3 without Taunt. Um, yes. I mean, it'll protect his creatures. He but actually doesn't want to create that big of a Void Terror. <laughs> 
because uh, it gets big game hunter. Mm -hmm. So he just straight up plays attacks and plays Boy Terror for a 5 5. I don't even know if you do that. Uh, you might want to utilize the Honor Creeper okay. um, in order to uh, get a Boy Terror. Put an extra power on the board. Oh, Death man. Spite. Death Spite's interesting. This is the time where you can play Sylvanas. I don't know. Shield Maiden's like the more safe play. Sylvanas is a better board impact play, but he also has. Um, it's also the point where like he might have implosion, and Sylvanas will have no impact. So I think Shield Maiden's the better bet if you had to choose between six drops. The thing about Death Spite is that you have an opportunity to set up an actual weapon now, and the weapon will be really important for you to make sure that you have like a strong minion that can stay on the board instead of just get bullied. I really wish you could play Sylvanas, but it's realistically like that. Im the threat of implosion is just way too high. Yeah. For me personally, I I'm not sure if he feels like that's the case at all. Shield Maiden also might not be able to come down safely either. Like if he plays just Shield Maiden, then his opponent might be able to capitalize. Between Shield Maiden, um, Sylvanas, and Despite, I think there's like merit to all those plays based on what you're going for. Like, right. Death Spite is the, is the play that's going to, like, have the most lines of play after for you to win. Mm -hmm. uh, Shield Maiden is just to stop as much bleeding as you can right now. And Sylvanas is sort of the middle ground. You're right. sort of saying that... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh! Right. just want to see this as real quick. No, Gaz is about to pop out. Nate, that's a 4-6. Oh. That's nice. All right, now he's got Big Game Hunter, though. Yeah, but there's going to be another rather large creature that he has to deal with here. I mean, that's still a 6-7. That's a Boulder Fist Ogre. Okay, so he big game hunters the Malganus. And that, then he has mana has for nothing but Acolyte of Pain. So then he plays Acolyte of Pain, then attacks the Imp Gang boss. Hope he draws into Execute. Hope he draws into Execute. Kills off. His opponent has one damage on board. He's at seven health, and then he dies to Power Bowman in guard. <laughs> Either way, no matter what he does. No, it's going to happen. Watch. He's dead. I've got the beast in my Wait, side. no, he doesn't even. Even just Power Bowman would kill him. No, no, no. If so he doesn't draw into Execute. Ooh. Okay, so he's taking, like, the ultra safe route, I guess. Like armoring up, but it, he does die to power overwhelming. So yeah. he's back. It's tied to two. His last chance was actually just that execute draw. Oh no! Is it going to happen again? Is Trump going to get denied? It's possible. We're going to a game it's five. It's happening. Um, this is Trump has to be feeling at least somewhat confident. Now, yep. the thing about. Uh, being up 2-0 and then falling and then bringing it to a game five. If you're the player that was up 2-0 in the beginning, Hearthstone's a there's a lot of mental fortitude involved when um, competing at the highest level of Hearthstone. Um, you have to really be able to not let the momentum of your opponent tilt you or affect you. I've seen a lot of cases where. A player goes up 2-0, loses the next two games, mm -hmm. and even though they have a favorable deck going into the last match, they make suboptimal plays because they just feel like the pressure's on them. More so than it's on their opponent, who was down 2-0. I got nothing to lose. Let me just play for play for, for kicks, you know? Yeah, I guess so. Um, so that's why, I mean, I don't have any statistics to back this up, you know? So we'll just go ahead and say 9 out of 10 times. <laughs> God. I'd say the player that... <laughs> If a player goes up 2-0, then loses the next two games, they're st pretty likely to lose the final one. Nine out of ten times. I'll bet nine out of ten dollars. <laughs> That's just nine that dollars. <laughs> Why can't you just say nine dollars? I'll bet that much that you're wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's not really a statistic. I just made that up. But I, f I feel in my heart. <laughs> you, really? I feel in my heart of you hearts. You had me. You had me, man. <laughs> I feel in my heart of hearts that the player, that momentum plays a huge role in things like this. All right. Savitz has the combo patron warrior. Trump has the control warrior. What are some of the keys to victory on both sides here? Uh, brawl is a one key to victory for the control warrior. 
Uh, but just generally controlling the pace of the game earlier. Uh, drawing a lot, gaining a lot of armor. Um, I think that's against combo decks in general. Uh, the more the more cards you draw, the more life you gain. Ooh, that's Harrison big. Jones. Yeah. But as far as the control where it goes in this in this matchup, there's not like too much that that really goes into it. I mean, it plays like a standard. Control Warrior always has like linear goals. Like everything always lines up the same way. There are some matchups where you play Control Warrior where you have to play it slightly different. But it's always like, oh, you're trying to draw as many cards as possible, gain as much life as possible, and then eventually draw into your big threats and win. Like that's the linear path of Control Warrior. And in this matchup, it works sort of the same way. There are some weird things that you have to play around. But generally speaking, aside from not leaving as many one one damage or two damage creatures on the board as possible going into turn eight it plays pretty straightforward i think the onus is really on the uh the grim patron warrior to piece together combos in order to pressure enough like you can't just throw out your your important threats willy-nilly in this matchup you have to sort of be really patient be really conservative with your cards like frothing berserker and warsong commander and then set up large turns later in the game was that too greedy of Trump to drop the Acolyte of him? His opponent could have coined out Death Spite as well. I think Trump just wanted to draw. Also, yeah. it's one of those things where the Acolyte does become a liability the longer it stays on the field. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that goes back to the point I was making about not leaving one damage creatures on the board. Trying to get as much value out of Armorsmith and Acolyte of Pain early on. So that way your opponent can't leverage those for Grim Patron turns later on. Tough Maybe. decision from Savits to... Oh, what, what were you going to say, TJ? No, I was just going to think out loud. Go ahead. No, that's dangerous. My thoughts going into the wind. Okay. Well, uh, I like that Savitz was thinking about holding, and he ended up did holding the Dread Corsair because it's a really easy tempo play to make a lot of times. Yeah. But, um, you know, many times you're just considering that what your opponent could do on their turn. So turn four is Death Spite. If he did, he'd be able to kill it, collect value, and you don't really get Death Spite protecting anything. The Death Spite's supposed to make it so oh, it's wonder. really inconvenient to get to, like, both Grim Patron Warriors that spawn at the same time. Yeah. On the opposite end, Savitz is going to be in big trouble when his opponent drops Harrison Jones. Yeah. I'd like to give a couple tips to Patron Warrior players out there. Okay. As an as a sort of an education here. Um, Dread Corsair is a, like you said, uh, making the tempo play can sometimes be really dangerous. You want, the, the biggest thing about Dread Corsair is that it gives you a, pretty much a free instant card draw out of Battle Rage. I thought he left. Yeah. That's rough. He's very sad. That was right in the kisser. Yeah. There goes my education. Don't worry, you would have been majorly in debt anyways. Execute being drawn, not too impactful, but that 5-4 buy, or 5-3, I guess. That was devastating. Savitz really needed that Death Spite Whirlwind effect. Looked like he threw up a little bit inside. I don't blame him. Also, I think Trump has enough removal where he can handle any infestation of uh, Grim Patrons. Yeah. Brawl, Shield Slam, Execute. Times two. Times two. You um, pick off one of the three ones with a cool Taskmaster. But you still need to get to the point where you're you're going to close up the game yourself. I mean, event, I guess he'll eventually draw into his threats, but he's got no pressure. None. He could just pass. But there is no, there's no onus for him to necessarily try and end the game soon. Yeah, but if he doesn't draw into enough, um, well, yeah, what I guess he's got quite a bit of time. Remember that one game we saw a couple weeks ago? Where it was one, like... Grim Patron Warrior versus yeah. Control Warrior. And, and the Control Grim Warrior just War kept... I think it was Chalky. was just kept armoring up and playing. Never played a creature. Yeah, he just never yeah. played a creature. Just kept armoring up. That's a hard call to make, though. Oh, to not man. play a single creature. You have to calculate how exactly oh, how much damage it's going to do. He just played Big Game Hunter. Is that going to prompt Savitz <laughs> to go for just Coin Dr. Boom and then... There's no reason not to, to be honest. Yeah, but he's got removal anyways. Like, he's got execute. I'm actually a little surprised that Trump went to go so aggressive onto the board. Yeah. But 
He's got so much. He's got Shield Slam. No problem. Question is, do you think do you think Big Game Hunter will stay alive to atone for his sins? No. Or will the Boombots get revenge? Boombots will indeed get revenge. For having their master killed. It's just hot. Yeah. It's just likely. Nine out of ten times. <laughs> Gosh. Epic meme. Overused. I'm sorry, Dan. I let you down. Ah, DJ, you did just fine, so. <laughs> Spoonbot hit the face for one and kills off the, uh, the big game hunter. Getting close to that inevitable combo. And if I'm Savitz, I don't mind keeping that 2 2 alive. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, so. Here's what's playing through Savitz's mind right now. This is one of the reasons why this deck is so hard, especially against Control War. It's because there's so many things that you have to play around every single turn. And you have to try and piece together a win in a very creative way. Not even necessarily a creative way, but pretty much your win condition in this matchup is double frothing, worse on Commander, and then multiple Whirlwind effects to try and get a one-turn kill. It's the same with Priest, essentially. Um, th this matchup against Priest and this matchup against Control War it's just since control where it can go above 30 health, it makes it that much harder. Right. Um, you basically just, you you use as much of your cards as you can to try and control the state of the board as much as you can. But in reality, you're trying to be as conservative as possible with a lot of your combo pieces, just so you can piece together huge turns later on. Instead of like three bursts of medium to large size turns, like mostly Grim Patron Warrior does, you're saving up for like one huge burst of a turn with Frothing Berserkers. Makes sense. And that's how you win. And that case that you made before with Chalk, he played around that perfectly. Literally at the end of the game, the only thing he did was armor up every turn. Didn't even play a single creature. He knew how much damage could possibly be done. It was Chang against Chang. Uh, he knew how, exactly how much damage could be done, and he said, if I play a creature, it's going to give him an extra damage on each of his Frothing Berserkers, which could kill me. There's no reason for me to have to play any cards. Yep, fair enough. Let's see if Trump can make that read too. If it gets to that point. It may not it's even. still a while. He's got Brawl and Execute, so he can guaranteed kill off whatever comes out. And, well, Savitz could start drawing some cards. How, much re how many resources does he want to use to draw those cards, though? It's a weird situation where... In order to draw more cards, you have to spend more cards. Right. It's how much does he value the cards that he does have. Grim Patron and well, the second worst on Commander is the key, right? You don't want. Yeah. To, you'd rather toss that first Grim Patron, whirlwind it a couple times, and yeah. battle rage. Yeah. But you also need to save whirlwind effects. He's been through both death spite, right? That's that. Just one. Just one. Okay, just one. Okay. Yeah. He wants to make sure that he has at least two. I think. I think at least two whirlwind effects late, for later in the game. Grim Patron, Inner Rage, Whirlwind, Battle Rage. You can't fit in the Armorsmith, unfortunately. Yeah. Ah, that's three cards. It's not too bad. It's excellent. Because you can build up a pretty strong board. Yeah. You yeah, might even pick up like another Battle Rage. And then that could be really key later on. Of course. Uh, this is dependent if Trump even wants to let those live. He definitely feels a little uncomfortable letting any of those live for a significant time, but he can, let's see. Just brawl. He'd brawl right now? Is he there a way he Both Grim have been using? used. Oh, both of them? Yeah, right? Are you sure? No. I'm pretty sure only one has. Okay. But, like, you know, basically, whichever one survives is going to die anyways. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I'm crazy. Yeah. I feel like he has more uh, Grim Page in his deck. One more. Okay. Yeah. I'll believe you. He definitely has Frothing Berserkers. Oh, yeah. We haven't seen Frothing Berserkers yet. And there is one. Speak of the Devil. Okay. So you know your opponent also has, like, Execute. Use both Shield Slams. Mm, so he needs to draw. Would he be willing to use Battle Rages for one card? 
He could use Gromash for two. Yeah, but I don't know if you want to... How does that make... I don't know. Just throw your... Because eventually Gromish you get a... Whirlwind number two, right? So you can get Whirlwind number two. Yeah, you throw Grom. Oh, he can toss in a Warsong Commander with the two Armor Smiths. <laughs> that's then, his second Warsong Commander, battle though. Rage. Yeah, that's seven, nine. And he has three chances to get um, Execute. No, but then his Warsong just dies to the weapon. Yeah, yeah then, then he has no way to win virtually. I think without Warsaw Commander, this matchup uh, isn't like without Warsaw right. Commander in the late game. This this uh, matchup is impossible. So I mean, he just plays hard armor as it is. Smiths now and just pass. Yeah, because you don't want to use Grom either because you're just throwing a Grom into a Sludge Belt to the aren't even kill it. Oh my! Ugh, I don't. I really don't like that. He's gonna use Gromash as the other like. Frog yeah, yeah. But in reality, the the Frothing Berserker should be doing more damage than the Grom. If you want to win, it, it, what it sort I, of has yeah. to. I mean, that's a really good point. Um, it needs to be doing some major burst damage. Yeah. Usually like 15 plus. Grom right. is a really interesting draw here because it, it's pretty much his only play outside of just being super defensive. Um, yeah, I think shutting down one of the armor smiths is fine. You definitely need to take care of that, uh, that frog. Though. No. Yeah. It might go down to an opponent's execute, but it's okay because, again, it's like the same concept. Your opponent's just running out of uh, stuff to do. Yeah. Also, Trump uh, ends up giving a little bit more armor, but it's, it's inconsequential. Mm -hmm. now a lot of people are like, why did you kill the armor smith first? Because the frothing berserk would have done way too much damage. Guys. Yeah. It would have put his Grom at four instead of, or, yeah, four, five health instead of right. seven health. Which is a pretty big deal. Now he uh, battle rages, but unfortunately he's not going to be able to execute or deal with that Grom. It's looking pretty grim. Looking pretty grim for Savitz here. Yeah. Execute onto the opponent's Gromash. Chop that uh, that uh, armor smith down with the axe. And shield maiden. This is looking like a Trump victory. The one thing that you have to keep in mind is Trump is just about out of cards. If Savitz finds That's a way, thing too. if Savitz finds a way to deal with this board, which is possible if he can draw, he needs. That <laughs> was there one execute in those last six cards. He's got yeah. six cards remaining. One of them being an execute. One of them being a. You know, like Alex Straza. <laughs> yeah. I think you have to draw. Play both Acolytes with the Warsong Commander. Well, I was thinking just... No, I was it, it's yeah, almost I desperate times. Calls for desperate measures. Yep. That's true. I mean, at this stage, when the Warrior's out of cards, you can effectively win over a Needs couple execute. turns. Execute. Cool Task. Cool Task is another card. You can play the Acolyte, Cool Task it. Inner Rage it, kill off uh, the Shield Maiden. Oh no, you don't have enough mana. Oh gosh. This has. Well, no, he has one. He's going to have one more draw if he attacks in. Frothing Berserker. Oh, Does he even have another execute in there? He's got to. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the Enter Button turned green. Mm -hmm. He's still not dead yet. 17 damage. You're right in the sense that he might be able to outpace him if he's not drawing enough cards. Yeah, I mean, these cards are, Very aside from explosive. the execute, yeah, the cards that uh, Savitz has in his hand are explosive. The cards that Trump has in his hand are pretty underwhelming, aside from maybe the execute. Right, but he doesn't have to execute this one-two now. He can just silence it. Yeah, yeah. And then he wants to kill off this uh, Warsong commander. But he also wants that 10 damage from Grom to go to face. Yeah, so you can do that, and then Cruel Task, and then Execute. Right. Okay. Yeah. You set up lethal next turn. You're left with um, your opponent with a silence one two on the board. You have a you do 15 damage. Put him at 10. You have a cruel taskmaster Grom as well as a shield maiden. Mm -hmm. And an owl. And an owl. You have no Every cards. Every little damage counts. Yep. I I yeah I think going all in here is okay. 
I think if Trump's like worried about sludge belcher from the opponent, like that could be problematic if he like drops if he happens to draw sludge belcher as like his last card that he just drew off that yeah. light and then he has execute. It's like sludge belcher execute. Oh wait, you're out of cards. Oh wait, I'm pressuring you. I yeah. win. Yeah. So I mean, this it's gut wrench time or gut check time. Excuse me, gut wrench. He executes the acolyte. Doesn't even want it to be around anymore. Sciences. The War Song Commander. All right. Well, he keeps a cool Taskmaster just in case for the emergencies. Oh. And executes drawn. So that's there's there's a glimmer of hope. Wow. There's a very small glimmer of hope. Wow. I mean, Savit's had four or five cards remaining, so the fact that he wouldn't be able to get Execute would be quite astounding this deep into the deck, but it is a second Execute. What yeah, I think he has three cards remaining after this Execute. One of them being a Grim Patron. One of them is a Grim Patron. There's, he knows that there's one card in Trump's hand. He's been through both Executes, both right. Shield Slams, Brawl. He might want to protect the... He might want to like see what it is first and then play the Emperor Thorson, but Frothing Berserker is the right choice because he gets most damage. Talk about gut wrench time, it is. And also, he should maximize his damage by using both of those cool Taskmasters, right? Yeah. Back to work. Oh, man. He's setting it up. He has to do over 50 damage in two, three turns. Yeah, but how does Trump come back? Trump has, he doesn't have Grom, doesn't have Brawl, Just doesn't Gore have Executes. Gorehow and, and end it. Does he have Gorehow? How is he gonna end it with Gorehow? I don't know. Tell me. He can't. This, I mean, this very well, it, um, unless Trump draws into something that can really contest the board like Sylvanas. I'm out of oh wait, cards. he's that almost out of cards. I mean, at this point, Emperor Thorson is just a five-five body. Okay, so he's gonna do at least uh, nine. Uh, 13. Oh, man. I need a calculator. All right. This turn? Are you talking about? Well, he's thinking about, like, what he can maximize his damage in right now. Well, he could attack into the uh, Shield Maiden and Whirlwind. Right. Or Whirlwind first. Right. If he Whirlwinds first, his Frost Berserker is going to gain 5 damage. It'll be at 12. And so then he, he could kills do off the Shield Maiden. Yeah. So he could do 20 damage this turn. Oh, my sweet lord. Yeah. This isn't happening, TJ. This is insane. Because next turn, he'll be able to do, um, let's see, he'll have 17 damage from from this turn. So he'll put him at, what, effectively, okay, so 36 health. He has 19. Oh, <laughs> oh. oh man, that's that's kind of hilarious. The fiery, the fiery War Axe? It might win. It might win the game because this the is the last card I think is a Grim Patron. Oh, you're right. So he's got one more way to activate it. Yeah. Unless I put my faith in you and you were wrong. Dude, that's 30 damage from a Frothing Berserker. That's pretty intense. I'm pretty intense. sure it's getting Grim Patron. If not, it might be just a weapon instead. It is Grim Patron. It is. Faith rewarded, TJ. Also, Savit's going to take fatigue damage. I'm not sure it's going to be relevant this game, but it's one of those things where you have to be mindful of it. Wow. This one's going to come down to the wire. Sludge Belcher! That's pretty huge. That's gigantic. I mean, the, the quality of draws in general. He just needs to buy time. I mean, even like Alex Straza drawn at this point to bring himself back up to 15. Literally, That's he, right. just, he like, just has to survive for like, what, four more turns? <laughs> so, yeah, so he might just run out of damage. Yeah. Sludge Belcher is pretty big. And now, okay, so basically he's, uh, now he can go in for the, the Grim Patron. But he's taking some damage. Don't, don't forget. He's, he can send the Grim Patron for the jugular. Dude. Four damage has to go to the face. Let's come down to this. Um, and he's also, like, it's going to be 11 damage next turn. And his opponent has to take it over the course of two turns, but he can cut it off. At five for the Th Thorazin. Th so this needs three turns, which means Trump has to whiff on the next two draws, or else it's over. So this wins in three turns. Yeah. But two draws is very likely for Trump to pick up something. Sylvanas. Oh. 
And I think that's that's it. That's it. He can't actually kill him in time. Nope. Squeeze came really close. Really, really close. But, it was a nail biter. Uh, it, it was just way too much armor gain. I mean, Trump had so many ways out. I mean, he had even just an Alex Shiraza draw. Um, what another sludge belcher. Right. Um, yeah, he just needed to buy a couple turns, and you can see the the life slowly start to drain out of Savitz's face yeah. as he realizes. The realization that he's not coming back to California. Not for this season, but nope. he came one game away from it. But guess who else is coming instead? Good old Trump. The mayor himself. Tucks Savitz into bed. It's nighttime for EU. <laughs> wow. You got tucked by Trump. And there you have it. Trump will be your fifth player joining Calento, a life coach, Kabi, and Raynad. Well, it was uh, quite the roller coaster ride throughout that series. Yeah. But Trump ended up being able to stabilize Weather Storm and advance to the finals happening in June 57th. He's going to be trekking all the way from San Jose. <laughs> Is that where you live? Really? Yeah. So okay. for people who don't know, that's a one-hour plane ride. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, six hours by car, but, you know, U.S., whatever. It's kind of like no big deal. You just fly. DSL Studios is a very exotic world, though. It is. We have our own uh, B letter in the in the mountains for Burbank, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And then we also have, a, you know, the nice little desert. The tumbleweeds mm -hmm. are quite exquisite. <laughs> very well put. Uh, very well put. What yeah. a fun set of games today, man. It was only the first day out of four for the Redemption Tournament. Mm -hmm. One spot given away today, another tomorrow, and two more on Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, so that's going to be, um, we have three more players from the Redemption Tournament, and then, of course, eight players from that Last Chance Open. Um, and Last Chance Open, of course, will be um, a big open bracket that's going to take place the next week, or the, the week following this weekend, I believe. Um, any player in North right. America is eligible to participate. Uh, the top eight players from that last chance qualifier bracket will be joining us at the, at the LAN as yeah. well. So. We have eight players that are co that are going to be figured out after the broadcast is finished. But yeah. we are getting eight more players into the finals as a last call. How do they sign up, TJ? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you can head to legendaryseries.com. Right. And dot com. Yeah, legendaryseries.com actually um, redirects you to like play.esl right. gaming. So if, they, if if you're in North America and you want to get one of the eight spots, go to legendaryseries.com. They're doing this so that way they can give away world championship points. You have to have eight open and, and eight uh, invites, I guess. But the invites yeah. are getting through qualified process, so it's a little bit murky. But either yeah. way, a lot of spots excuse me, are being given away. So make sure, again, legendaryseries.com. If you're in North America, sign up for the qualifier next week, and we'll see you at the land as well. Yeah, the reason why it's North America only is because since it's about – the last chance qualifier would take place about one week out from the land finals. Um, due to like flight visa restrictions, uh, we won't have time to get anybody outside of North America uh, to Burbank in time for the land finals. So that's why it is only available uh, to, to North American players. But we figured we'd give them a chance since they have all the DreamHack stuff that, that's a lot more accessible. Sounds good. Yeah. So what happens now, DJ? Um, well, we're waiting on an interview with uh, our winner. Uh, we get to talk Trump. to Trump. We will get to to talk to Trump. But I guess we can take this opportunity uh, in the meantime to uh, thank our wonderful sponsors to make all of this possible. Plantronics and Gigabyte uh, have, have hopped along for the ride mm -hmm. for season two and are making a lot of this stuff possible, are making a lot of uh, the stuff we do, uh, the land, Legendary Series Land Finals. Being able to fly all these players out, uh, it's going to be a 16-player land, which is huge. It's pretty massive. Um, last season was eight players, and it seemed awesome and relatively extravagant. But well, this season's going to be even better. It's going to be top-notch. It's going to be kicking. What did you call it? I said bumping. Bumping. Yeah. And we would not be able to have a bump in land finals without Plantronics sure. and Gigabyte. So big shout-out to those guys. All right. And, uh, of course, guys, stay in the conversation as well. Hashtag HLS on the social media. Tweet at, e at ESL Hearthstone and let us know what uh, you guys think about those series of matches. Congratulate Trump at Trump SC or... Tell us, uh, Azumo, what a great job you did to cast and they add Azumo QT and uh, stay engaged with us on social media. Because the more you guys tweet about this kind of stuff, the more they can show the, the sponsors and the things like, oh, yeah, this is how many people care about the event. Just like just like a viewer uh, viewer matters in terms of if you're watching or not. Um, social media engagement does matter, too. I know a lot of people feel like that's not really that important if I tweet about it or you know go on Facebook, but it is. You know, Those people see it. They see that you care about the product and... And as a result, they're more willing to go for events like this. It enables us to do some really cool stuff. But I think we do have uh, Trump ready for an interview. So why don't we uh, kick it over to that 
Hey, Trump, can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, first off, uh, big congratulations. Are you excited to join us for the land finals? Oh, man, I'm super excited. Uh, that's <laughs> nice, man. That's really good to hear. Uh, I just want to give, get your insight on your deck choices real quick. Uh, for the for the tournament today, um, a lot of players actually brought the same decks. They brought like Warlock, Hunter, Warrior. Uh, just go into each of your decks uh, briefly and explain uh, your thought process and, and why you brought it. Okay. Uh, on the topic of handlock, I expected basically I brought three decks which are really good against uh, Patron Warrior. Uh, that was my main goal, and I expected a lot of people to bring Patron Warrior. Um, and I also brought decks which were generally good against Zoo as well. That was the general plan. Were people uh, playing a lot of decks that you expected? I know you said Patron Warrior, but um, as far as like the, the mid-range Face Hunter hybrid, where did this uh, whole anomaly come from? All right, the mid-range uh, Hunter hybrid, I played that as well, and I have to thank my late night browsing of competitive hearthstone reddit for that um i read that that deck's been going around it's had good results so i just kind of blindly trusted it and went with it it's a really good <laughs> sounds deck. good yeah and then he qualified for a 25k land not bad do you yeah. remember <laughs> do you remember the player's name who posted the mid-range face hunter hybrid deck I this do. is actually a trivia question. What was it? I do. Uh, I give credit where credit is due. So Party Platypus was oh. the one who posted it, but it is <laughs> Protohype's list. Okay. Uh, so the thing is, TJ uh, said the guy who introduced it was Iced Fat. And I was like, that's not his name. And he's like, yes, it was. Maybe I mixed it up. I think Iced Fat, right. might have been, <laughs> been the player who played Ice Fat is actually Tiger. Uh, TJ's Smurf account name. People don't know that. It's actually <laughs> I'm just trying to give tag. credit to myself. Uh, no, but... um. Um, well, it's cool to have you, Trump, man. Yeah. Uh, I, I know you haven't been able to go to too many events so far. You've been, uh, you know, hanging home, holding out America for it. Uh, but it's going to be really good to have you. Is there anything you're looking forward to doing while you're in L.A. that you haven't gotten to do last time you came for BlizzCon or something? Um, I'm just looking forward to meeting everyone who's going to be attending the event. Should be a really good Hearthstone event. I'm very happy that it's in California. And yeah. you guys are very happy that it's in California. We are. That I'm in California. Yeah. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Our piggy banks are safe. Thank you, Trump. You did it for the, you did it for the kids. <laughs> you never met Life Coach, have you, Trump? Huh. Um. I don't think I've I've somehow never gotten to an event with him. So I look mm. forward to that. Well, look forward to really just meeting all the Hearthstone players again. In good old L.A. All right. Sounds all right. Good. All right, Trump. Do you have any uh? uh Final shout outs that you want to make to any of your fans or, or sponsors or anything? Yeah, I mean, TSM, <laughs> Wanted, uh, Ray, us. Uh, big thank you to Protohype for coming up with a great list for me to copy pasta. Thank you, thank you. Alrighty. Well, thank you all of you for continuing to watch Trump. There it is. Indeed. All right. Well, the mayor has spoken. <laughs> Thank you, Trump, and congratulations. We'll be seeing you here at the beginning of June. All right. Well, that was uh, Trump, the winner of day one of the Redemption Tournament. Uh, four days of high-packed Hearthstone action, and uh, we're already a fourth of the way done. Trump beat Savitz, and that was a really close series, and I actually, I... I I think that was like the pinnacle of the excitement. So I think it might it, it's going to be really hard to top day number one. But tomorrow, we've got some amazing players, TJ. Indeed. Um, I wonder if we can bring up the group back again. But uh, Chalky, uh, Cross, 7224. Man, I don't I don't even have the player. Strife Crow. Strife Crow. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be a pretty action-packed day tomorrow. Um, oh, yeah. There we go. Uh, Modern Leopard, Bunny Muffins, Lead Paint, and GCT. Turth. So that should be really exciting. I mean, Chalky and Stripe Grow are two of the players that have had some really good results lately. And uh, we saw some really exciting play from a lot of the, the open bracket players that you saw in the bottom half there. So um, it should be a really exciting day tomorrow and, of course, uh, throughout the weekend as well. Trump, th uh, this day is going to be hard to top with, uh, of course, the exciting finals between Savitz and Trump. And, of course, Chang's decks are always a, a, a pleasure to watch. Yeah. Well, it's too bad.
that uh, you know Chang did not win. Whenever mm -hmm. I, cha I, I say Chang, I think of Chang from Community, like Senor <laughs> Chang. But um, Chang you know, he was not even. <laughs> Uh, Chang was not able to advance today. He was another fan favorite of mine, at least. Uh, and we've had a really good uh, list of competitors so far, but uh, overall, anyone who gets through to the finals is going to be great. We already have uh, Kalenta, who won the first week, Life Coach, yeah. who won the second week, Kabi won the third, and Raynad, who won the fourth. Really good list of players, and then Trump joining them. That's just, people would be like, oh man, ESL invited players again. It's like, no, these guys actually like went through the qualification yeah. process of getting, it was really tough. Had to win quite a few matches. Yeah. Uh, but again, we will return tomorrow at the same time, 1 p.m. PST. For myself, uh, from Frodan, from everybody here at ESL, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.